Through a series of videos, I'm going to demonstrate and discuss how I've used progress bars in development environments to let me know when APIs are ready, when installations are complete, and also when processes have started. So now when illustrating a progress bar for each one of those examples, I'm going to be using the same script. And I'm simply just going to add, tweak, and modify it a bit for each example. So now what I'd like to do here first, as it pertains to this script, is just to give you a high level overview as to how it works and to focus on the controls within it. So now when looking at this script, I'm going to say that there are three main components. There's a control section which can be found at the beginning and also at the end. And this is used to control what the user can see and do once they run the script. The second component is this function over here. So this function contains the math that we'll use to measure the progress as well as some printf statements that we'll use to print the progress bar within the terminal. The third component is this loop down here. So this loop is how we're actually updating our progress bar in order to track the progress. And the way that we do that is through this conditional statement. We say so long as we're less than 100%, then on a particular time interval, we're going to attain a value, and then we're going to feed that value to the math within our progress bar, which will then be used to track the progress of the task. All right. So now the script that we're looking at is called job sh and when we want to take a look and understand the controls that are on lines 12 and 13 and we can see that they're commented out we're going to actually illustrate them so why we're implementing them. So if I run this script the first thing that we can see right off the rip is we see this cursor over here and the cursor is useful in letting us know that the system's not frozen right. So if we're measuring the task for say for example of something that's quite long right and the cursor is not blinking then we know something's wrong um, but what we're going to be doing in later sections is we're going to be using a spinner so we don't actually need something like this so we're actually just going to remove it so we can do that with that command t put civis that's on line 12 and first we'll verify that it is in fact commented out so we'll use a stream editor to pull out the line 12 from the file and we can see the comment character is there all right, we knew it was because we could see the cursor and now we'll use the stream editor again to actually remove that from the beginning of the line we'll verify all right and now we'll run the script and we should no longer see a cursor all right good so now for the next control so let me kind of clear this out so if we run the script again and I click in here and I start typing some keys you're going to see that they're actually registering, right? And if we press enter, we're going to start displaying multiple progress bars. So this is not good, and we actually want to remove this from happening, and the way that we're going to do that is with the command that's on line 13. So STTY minus echo. All right, so if I issue a control C here, and we kind of go through the same steps. So first, let's verify that it's commented out. And again, we know that it is because we can do those things, but we're just going to verify. So here we can see it is. Let's remove the comment character. All right, verify again. It's there. Okay, and now if we run the script and we verify, we can no longer do those things. All right, so now I'm typing some keys, nothing's happening, and pressing enter, nothing's happening. All right, so now I'm just going to issue a control C and let's go back to the script for a second. Okay, so on lines 12 and 13, we're actually putting those controls in place. And then down the very bottom on lines 36 and 37, we're kind of removing them, okay? However, if we don't get to the bottom, right? So if we're kind of stuck within the script, if it gets frozen, what have you, um, and we issue a control C and we don't remove them, then they might still be there, <laughs> all right, when we return to a prompt. So what we went and did within the script here, so this is kind of very similar to JavaScript event listeners. So we're going to kind of like listen for that control C. And when we hear it, we're going to run this function right here, which is then going to remove those controls that we put in place on lines 12 and 13.